Hello, once again. It's wonderful to see that you are there watching. And I hope you will learn a thing or two from this lesson. Preparing our minds for service. Maybe you're curious. Fine. But first, we will have a song led by David Lee. Hello, this is our song. As a tree beside the water has the Savior planted me, all my fruit shall be in season. I shall live eternally. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Anchored to the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Though the tempest rage around me, through the storm, my Lord, I see, pointing upward to that haven where my loved ones wait for me. I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Anchored to the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. When by gr grief my heart is broken and the sunshine steals away, then his grace in mercy given changes darkness into day. I shall not be moved, I shall not be moved, anchored to the rock of ages, I shall not be moved. Amen. I know that you are now curious what the lesson is about. Let us begin. Our minds prepare us for action. If you're walking on a farm and you notice a bull starting to, to starting to run towards you, what do you do? You would be scared and you start running. And you'd hurry to the fence and jump over. That's how our minds prepare us for action. Some funny stories appear. Those who, of those who are afraid. And one story I heard about, it's very weird. One barn was on fire. The two men tried to put out the fire and they were found on the roof with buckets of water. They finally got the fire out and they asked, how did you get up there? I, I don't remember. They were excited. How did they get up there with the buckets of water? Wow. If we see danger, our mind will tell your body how to act fast. Someone pulls a gun on you, you'll move fast. If we someone, see someone is hurt in an accident, our minds tell us to act to help. We go help. We need to prepare our minds for service to God. First Peter chapter one says, so prepare your minds for service.
in the Greek, it says, gird and tie up the loins of your minds. What does that mean? Okay. In the Bible times, the people, when they worked, the hard workers, that when they wore clothes with long robes, they would, get, they would get in the way. So they would tie like a belt. It's called girding up your loins. It shows that your legs are working. It's not bothering me anymore to tie them up. So the death translation says to prepare your minds for service. That's more like it. In American culture, we don't have long robes to tie up. We have pants. So there's no problem. We can go ahead and do the work. But in American culture, we do say we'll roll up our sleeves. And you understand what it means. I'm going to work. I'm rolling up my sleeves and I go on. That's what it means to prepare your minds for service. And have self-control. I don't feel like doing it. No. Now I need to force myself to go ahead. And have self-control. All of your hope should be for the gift of grace meaning kindness, that will be yours when Jesus Christ appears, meaning comes. Be ready. In the New Testament, the word hope means looking forward to. Maybe your uncle calls and says, I'm coming to your house tonight. And you're just excited and eager and looking forward to my uncle arriving. That's looking forward. It's not, I hope, I don't know. No, it's not that. You know that it will happen. happen. So you're looking forward to it. Looking Hope, you mean look forward to So Christians hope or look forward to God's gift of grace, meaning kindness. So remember that. We look forward to the rewards Jesus will give to us when he returns to the earth. Jesus Christ appears or comes. That will happen when he comes back. Not before. You did, in the past, you did not understand about these things. So, you did the evil things you wanted. My desires, I want to do bad things. That's what it's called. But now you are children of God who obey. So don't live like you lived in the past. Long ago you did bad things. And you're ashamed. I don't do it anymore. Because Jesus saved me and then go on and have life forever with him. You notice in that verse it said Christians are called children of God who obey. Obey.
Have you obeyed Jesus? Or are you resisting? I hope not. I hope that you will pay attention to the Lord Jesus and obey him. So don't live like you lived in the past. And looking back, oh, I did wrong. I'm sorry. No more. But be holy in all the things you do. The same as God is holy. God himself is holy. There's no sin in him. He's the same. So we need to try. To be holy in all things means to act like a child of God at all times. Not just part of the time. And sin once, no. You need to leave the sin. And don't do it anymore. God is the one who called you. Maybe he call, he's calling you now. If he's, call, if he's calling you, you better obey him. It is written in the scriptures, be holy because I, meaning God, am holy. We need to be like him, okay? This is a simple passage. But it shows we, as Christians, should be holy in our lives. Maybe you think, oh, I can't do that. Now, hold on. Some people misunderstand what it means to be holy. They think it means to be holier than thou. It's stuck up. You're a sinner. No, it's not like that. We are all sinners. But God shows us forgiveness. So we should accept each other as brothers and sisters and love each other. Yes, if a person does wrong, then we meet in love to show them what they've done wrong and help them to be right. If you're not a child of God yet, why not turn to Jesus Christ and obey him today? We'll pray now. Father in heaven, we thank you that you have forgiven us through your son's blood on the cross. We can't fully understand how, but we thank you because you forgive us through Jesus. And we grasp onto that belief in Jesus and try to obey through repentance, through our confession of faith, and through our baptism. And now we rise to a new life. Help us to walk in the way that you want us to do. Help us to see our mistakes. And we thank you for your continued love, we pray in Jesus' name, amen. As always, we end with our information. And we'd like for you to know that we love you and ask God's blessings on you.